20 years ago this week, I introduced uh -huh. you to a brand new This Morning expert. Ooh. Time to uh, get rich now. <laughs> Martin Lewis is here with, uh, with money-saving tips. I have terrific telephone bills. Can you tell me how I can save on those, please? Oh, how terrific are they? How big are we talking here? We're talking um, about £227 in front of me at the moment. You could take your BT basic line and then use one tell, which for £4.99 gives you the same unmetered evening and weekends. So for just five or extra, all your evening and weekend calls are then free. Do you make any international calls? No. OK. No. What happens if you do? Well, where? Give me a country. Let's see. Australia. Australia. First Australia, away. Or Australia simply enough. BT is 39p to 49p a minute, standard rate. If you use Teleddiscount, you get a local rate. You just pay a local rate call to call Australia. 4p a minute daytimes, 2p a minute evenings, 1p a minute at the weekend to call Australia, the USA, France, Germany. You've got to come back. I hope so. You're allowed like to come like back. Him. And he did. <laughs> and he stayed. The rest, as they say, was history. Oh, no, don't show me now. Cause look how young... I don't think you've changed. I think we all feel. I know. <laughs> I don't think I thought, you've I, 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 probably should, I, was, I was quite handsome then. I wish I'd known at the time. It would have, would have been far more confident. Always Martin Lewis. Now, listen, what, what's lovely about this is that you've been here for 20 years and I didn't realise that when you were at journalism school, being on this morning was a big part of the plan, was a dream. So they went round the room and I did my postgrad in broadcast journalism at Cardiff University, a wonderful place to go. And what do you want? I want to be a war correspondent, I want to be a foreign correspondent and all this. And I said, I'd quite like to be an expert on this morning. Oh. And I talked about money at the time and they said, why? Because obviously it's all hard-nosed journalists who are yeah. sitting there. And I said, well, you look, because I'm about empowerment. And I think, and the thing I'd always thought, uh, we're talking about this type of stuff, and that some of this conversation was later, was at the time this morning had lots of experts, you know, and it had your stylist and it had your psychiatrist and it had your people with nutrition and your chef and all of those things. And all of those people improve your life. But you can't do any of it without money. Mm -hmm. And I felt that that was really missing out there. Mm -hmm. And so, and sort of, I had this idea at the time that that would be interesting. And I went into to money and, and personal finance journalism. But for a few years later, I'd done some, some business work first. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. The, I mean, as you say, there was nothing like it uh, around at the time. You were you know, completely original there, on, on, certainly on here. But you nearly gave up. I was very close to giving up being money-saving expert. So, exactly as you say, and it's hard for people now, I mean, there'll be... 20, 30 year olds watching this who won't stand. Before I came along, money journalism was about investment and it was a bit woo if you talk mortgages, never mind gas and electricity bills or anything like that. And, and, and the, the television money stuff was about stop spending. It was actually impulse control and there was a great guy, Alvin Hall was out there mm. and he was doing it and he was really good at telling people how to stop spending. But I'm about playing the system and understanding how the system works and beating the system. So I'd come up with this, I'd developed it on this Simply Money channel that nobody watched, and that's where I sort of learnt my trade and got the title, and I came out. That went bust. I had a column in the Sunday Express. I did some stuff on Channel 5. That show was stopped. It was at Glory Honeyford. And I had, I had lunch with my dad, and I said, this is getting rid. I'm not sure this will work. I keep going to people, and they say, money doesn't work on television. <laughs> Money, it just, it, you can't make it work on television. I'd been asking this morning for two years, my agent had been getting in touch and they, they said, it, it, it's just not gonna happen. I said to my dad, I'm gonna give it two months more and then I'm gonna have to quit Ten. because I, I'm really what struggling you, what to meet them. Where would you have gone? Well, I used to work in financial PR, which really wasn't for me, but I had to go and, I, had to, I wasn't able to pay my bills. I was getting quite close to that point where I couldn't pay the bills. I covered it just, and yeah. I was quite good with money. So, um, <laughs> so I was like, but I couldn't have done it with longevity. And then, go on. Two days later, after that lunch with my dad, I was asked onto a Radio 5 debate programme, which I did with Evan Davis, and it was one of those days, I remember thinking time, I, think I was on fire. It was a really good, I'd performed really well. You know those days you have, was broadcasters, sometimes it works, <laughs> and sometimes like, I want to be on again the next day because I just want to forget that last one. Yeah. It was one of those I was on fire. And <laughs> Shu Richmond, who was editor at the time... Lovely Shu. ..who had been asking for... And, and it never got to the editor, our request to come on. Her child, I believe, I think it was, was ill. So she came in late to the programme, unlike Norm. And on her way in, she was listening to that Radio oh 5 programme. Oh, my God. Program. And she then called up and found out who my agent was and said, would he like to come on? Well, we've been two years I've I been trying to get on the show. That. So she asked me on the show, and you saw that response, and, and you were wonderful at the time. And they told me afterwards, whether it was apocryphal or technical, I don't know, we bust the phone lines with so many callers coming through because no-one had ever done it before. Oh, my God. And I went home 
after that. And four hours later, I got the call, we'd like you on every week, and I burst into tears. No, oh, and then you've stayed. And I'm here 20 years later. That's, I mean, that's incredible. That It really is. And you and set you... up the website for 80 quid. Yeah, which was roughly the same time. I think I'd set it up a couple of weeks before. Originally, it was really to... to I, all my articles that I'd retain copyright of, I wanted to put them somewhere and update them, and I thought it'd help my broadcast career, because I'm a broadcast journalist. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was my training. I'm a campaigning, investigative, specialised broadcast journalist. Um, and so I, I set up the website at the time, and, um, and, and everything sort of happened together. I mean, right place, right time, lucky enough to be the right person to do it all. And it all, that was this morning and Radio 2 as well, I should say, were the two big things at the time where it all started to take off. You know, and I remember I had, the, the, the website was fascinating because I set the website up and before they had the term viral, mm. I used to send to my mates an email called Martin's Money Tips. And that email was stuff that was, I wasn't going to be on telly or able to write in time, really quick ways that you could beat the system. And I would send it to about 30 people and then I'd go to parties and friends of friends would say, love your email, people I've never met. And they sent it on. Because they'd been sending it on. So I collected that first email was 800 people, the first Martin's Money tip that I sent officially. And then within about two years, it was a million. And now there's 15 million signed up. I think yeah. we send to around 10 million each week. It's not called Martin's Money Tips anymore because I write it with the team. But... Uh, it, it, it's all started, it was all the same, it, all everything happened at once. It was amazing. I can't quite believe it when I look back. You, um... I wish I'd been clever enough to plan it. <laughs> right. I think somewhere you actually did inside. The, um, the, the education thing has always been really key to you Still as well, it. starting with children. I couldn't believe it. You, you wrote the first ever uh, children's financial textbook. You had to fund it yourself because the government wouldn't. I didn't write it. I funded a charity and worked with the right. education specialist because it's curriculum map. Yeah, so the story is I campaigned to get financial education on the national curriculum, which yeah. we succeeded in 2014, but it was a Pyrrhic victory, unfortunately, because no resources were put in and then they changed the rules so that most schools don't have to follow the national curriculum if they're academies and free schools, yeah. which is why parents, if your school isn't doing it, you need to talk to your head teacher and say, we want financial ed. So a few years later, I was in a meeting with uh, a minister and I was saying, look, it, it's not working because we haven't got resources. And he said, we need a textbook. And I said, oh yeah, we need a textbook. And he said, we need a textbook. And I said, yeah, we need a textbook. And this went round in circle for a little bit. And I, I, he said, I said, I don't quite understand. Let's do a textbook. He said, no, you need to do a textbook. Mm. The government doesn't fund textbooks. So I was like, fine, right? I don't think a private individual should fund a textbook for schools. But you know what? Let's do it. It's unbelievable. And then we got in touch and we got a publisher and they said, you can't, we can't support a private publisher doing it. So I'm like, mm. what do you mean? You, we can't have it done through a publisher. Mm. So I'm like, okay. So then I had to fund the whole thing. Right? I, I think it was, I think the donation was 350,000 or something of that. And I'm lucky enough that I've been very successful that I can do that. The first one went so well, we sent copies, 300,000 copies to every state school in the country. Mm. And then after we'd done it, the money and pension service, which is the non-government funing has now joined me and we've got done one for Wales and we've done one for Scotland no, we've done one brilliant. for Northern Ireland we've funded that 50, 50 50 as well don't you yeah. and yeah I'm just in the middle right now of working on how we're going to convert it for an adults textbook and we've got the 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 money academy as well which is an open university course on money we've done we um we're very proud of the fact that we um we found you um <laughs> and uh, finally um you managed to get on I mean you have uh, you've been incredibly successful um, um and uh, and I want a money expert to you know sort of be financially very, very secure and very rich, which, you, you know, website's done very well. And I think it's the right time now for us to say we should get 15%. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, I, I, I think it's a, it's a very, very nice opening offer and I shall counter with a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and that's why it's so successful. Um, it's lovely to see you. Well done. Well Thank done on everything. Thank, Thank you for having me on for the last uh, 20 years. Yeah. You know, and it, without that, I wouldn't have my show that's on in the evenings, which I'm very of proud that. of as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, just a little thing to worth noting. Thank you, ITV. I know we shouldn't say things like this, but ITV puts consumer journalism in daytime and in prime time. And at the same time, the BBC relegated terribly Watchdog to a concession on another programme. In the middle of a cost of living crisis, we should be supporting consumer and consumer finance journalism. And thank you, ITV, the commercial channel, for doing it. Yeah, well, quite right. Thank you. Thank